أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All praises due to Allah We seek his help and his forgiveness Allah guides no one can misguide, and whomever Allah leaves to go astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. رَبِّ شَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسَّلْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأَقْدَةَ مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُمْ قَوْلِي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Inshallah today we'll talk about Surah Al-Sharh. Uh, it's a surah that, mashallah, most of us know by heart and we use it a lot in the salah. So inshallah, we'll talk about the meaning of this surah and some of the things that happened with regards to this surah to the Prophet Wasallam, and that apply to us as well in our life, inshallah. So surah to sharh starts with Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Alam, the hamza, the first letter, the a uh, is uh, an interrogation word, which means did or do. Like when you ask somebody, did I not give you this? Did I not do this to you? And the word lem, lem is a negation. So basically, you put them together, it becomes did not. So the first part means did not, nishrah, the word nishrah, which where the, the name of the surah comes from, Nashrah means to open or to expand. And Nashrah is, has a lot of meanings that we're going to talk about today, inshallah. So I'm just going to give you the meaning of the first verse very quickly, and then we'll talk about it in details. So basically, Alam Nashrah, Allah is saying here to the Prophet wasallam, Did we not open or expand or uplift Laka for you, Sadrak, your chart, your chest? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the Prophet sallallahu reminding him, Alam nashrah laka sadra. Did not we, didn't we open or expand your chest for you? And Allah uses we, as we said, to refer to the pronoun of glory, the pronoun of adama, not because he is multiple people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we use that in our everyday language like we explain. <clears throat> so this is just the Meaning, Alam nashrah laka sadrak, did we not expand your chest for you? So what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here? And to us as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of his blessings upon him. And reminding us also of the blessings that he has given us. And one of the best blessings that we have is having this open heart. And we're going to explain that in details or having this Iman in our heart for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, this surah is related to the surah before it, which is surah al-duha. We know that in the beginning of the revelation, the Prophet sallallahu there was a period that was called the period of inqita' al-wahy. There was no wahy, there was no revelation. A revelation came to the Prophet, then there was a period of time, it happened twice, where there was no revelation. The Prophet sallallahu was sad. He was wondering why there was no revelation coming to him. And even the disbelievers started attacking the Prophet ﷺ. One woman, for example, said, your God has abandoned you. And actually she said, your shaitan. Because she didn't call him God, she said, your shaitan, your devil, has abandoned you and your God hates you, right? So the, the mushrikeen, the polytheists, started attacking the Prophet ﷺ, saying, that your God hates you and he abandoned you. That's why the revelation stopped coming to you. And during that period, as we said, the Prophet ﷺ was sad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surat Al-Duha to tell him, Ma wadda'ka rabbuka wa ma qala. Your Lord did not abandon you and he does not hate you. And something that we need to think about here is that that period of Anqita' al-Wahi, the period where there was no revelation, it was a test to both the believers and the disbelievers and the Prophet ﷺ. And this is something for us to ponder, to, to think and reflect on as well. If the Prophet ﷺ was a liar, if he was not from God, if he was not a messenger from God, 
he could have just made up anything. Like if the Quran was something that he made up, right? During that period of time, he would have just he could have just you know made up something and tell them, hey, this is a revelation, just like the revelation that came to me before. But since he's waiting for that revelation from God, it's not something that he makes up. That's why it was a long period. The first time was a long period. Some scholars say even 40 days. And the Prophet never ever dared to say like the revelation came to me before it actually comes to him. And he was patient. The believers were patient, waiting patiently for the revelation to continue to come back to the Prophet And there is a point here that I need to remind everyone. It's a very important point. Some people claim that the Prophet ﷺ even thought about suicide during that period of time when he was not receiving revelation. But this is not correct. This is a weak narration. It has no truth to it. The Prophet ﷺ never thought about committing suicide. And the maximum to that story is that the Prophet ﷺ was sad. He missed Jibreel. He missed the revelation. And he wanted the revelation to continue. Um, uh, if you excuse me, I just need to, um, to go get a tissue and I'll be right back, inshallah. One second, brother. I'm getting uh, a tissue. I'll be right back, inshallah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah revealed to him Surah Al-Duha reminding him that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala did not abandon him, that Allah does not hate him, and that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala keeps reminding him of the blessings. That he, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala found you as an orphan and he took care of you. So, if we go back to Surah Al-Sharh, you, say, you see Alam in the beginning as well. That's why a lot of scholars say that Surah Al-Sharh continues the meaning of Surah Al-Duha because it starts with Alam. Allah is reminding the Prophet ﷺ, didn't I find you an orphan and I took care of you? Didn't I um, open your chest and expand your, your chest for you? As mentioned in the beginning of Surah Al-Sharh. So basically this is a continuation of Allah reminding the Prophet ﷺ and reminding us of his blessings upon us. And one of the greatest blessings as we said is Allah expanding our heart, opening our chest, and allowing us to be Muslims. So, Shaqq al-Sadr. Now, this is an incident that a lot of scholars say is related to the Surah, Surah Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak. So, Nashrah, as we said, is to open. So, some scholars, and this is based on authentic narrations as well, authenticated by Imam Albani. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was in um, with Halima Sa'diya, the woman who, uh, the, the, the lady who was his fostering mother, the woman, the woman who was uh, taking care of him as a child, as a baby. Um, she wanted him to stay with her. And when he was about four years old, two angels came to him while he was playing with the kids. And they took the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they made him lie down. And the Prophet Sallallahu is telling us that he saw two people that he, their faces is, are faces that he's never seen before. They were wearing things that he's never seen before. So they laid the Prophet Sallallahu down. They had a tist, which is like a container of gold with ice and some narrations with water from Zamzam. They opened the chest of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet he said, I could not see any blood. I could not feel any pain. And then they took the heart of the Prophet out. So again, this is a miracle, right? This is not like uh, something that we can, can be explained scientifically. This is a miracle. There was no blood, that there was no pain, as the Prophet said. They took the heart of the Prophet out. And they took a piece, a black spot that was in there, like a alaqa, that was his heart 
And one of them said to the other, This is the part where shaitan can get to him from. And in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that they removed ghill and hasad, hatred and hasad from my heart and replaced it with mercy and affection for those who are younger and those who are older. And then the, he said that they washed the heart. They washed the heart of the Prophet ﷺ with this ice or this water from Zamzam. And then they put it back and the Prophet ﷺ stood up, but his face was yellow. The kids ran back to Halima Sa'diyya and they said that Muhammad ﷺ was killed. And Halima Sa'diyya started freaking out. She ran to the Prophet ﷺ and when she saw him like that, she took him and she wanted to give him back to his mother because she was afraid if he dies, she will be held responsible for that. So this was the first time. And the scholars say that the Prophet ﷺ's chest was opened three times. The first time is when he was around four years old, playing with the kids. And this was before he was a prophet. This was like the beginning to just remove this jealousy and hatred from his heart and replace it with mercy and affection towards others. The second was when he received the first revelation, meaning when he became a prophet, al Ba'tha. And it, this is to get him ready, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to get him ready for the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third was during Al-Isra wal miraj Before the Prophet ﷺ goes with Jibreel to Jerusalem, the Prophet says that he saw the, the roof of his house being open and Jibreel descending, uh, salam, descending upon the Prophet ﷺ. And he opened his chest and he took his heart as well. And he, uh, he had a, a fist of, jo of gold with water from Zamzam and he washed the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. And this time he says, that he filled the heart of the Prophet وسلم, with Iman and Hikmah, which means faith and wisdom. And this is something important because we're going to come back to that when we're talking about the difference between chest and heart. So before Al-Isra and Mi'raj, the Prophet وسلم, is now going to lead the Prophet in Masjid Al-Aqsa. It's going to go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is going to talk to Allah. And the, the Prophet ﷺ was being prepared for that journey to the heavens and to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his heart was removed again and it was filled with hikmah, wisdom, and iman. So these are the three incidents that the scholars talked about and the authentic hadith referred to in regards to opening the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. So some scholars are saying, that Allah saying, Alam nashrah laka sadrak, didn't we open your heart for your chest for you? Refers to the first incident when the Prophet ﷺ was a kid, and refers to the second incident before he became a prophet. So Alam nashrah laka sadrak. And other scholars say no, it just means in general, expanding the heart of the Prophet, ﷺ, uh, opening the heart of the, uh, the chest of the Prophet, ﷺ, as we're gonna explain that as well in a few minutes, inshaAllah. So now, what is the difference between the heart and the chest? We see the Quran talking about chest, sudur, sadr, and talking about qulub or qalb, which is the heart. So the heart is the center of faith and aql. We know aql, right? And aql, as we, as the brother Dickinson said, Imam Dickinson said yesterday, is something intangible. It is not something that we can feel. It, it, we're talking about the spiritual realm, the metaphysical realm. We're not talking about the actual piece of heart, piece of flesh that we're talking about. So the aql and the faith are centered in the heart. Just like the ruh, you know, we believe that we have a soul, we have a ruh. And the ruh, when it's inside you, it's something metaphysical, something that you cannot touch. It makes you alive, it gives you this it's your nafs. When it's inside you, that's your nafs, that's your ruh. You cannot see it, you cannot touch it, there's no dimensions for it. So just like that, there is that qalb that is full of faith and aql, and where the, the center of the aql is. And then you have the chest, which is the scholars call it the castle or the fort for the heart. So this is basically the fort, the chest is the fort, and the heart is the center of faith and aql. Now, shaitan's main goal is to reach that 
center of faith because shaitan wants you to lose iman shaitan wants you to go to hell for eternity right so his main goal is to get to that to the qalb but when allah said in surah al-nas you fi suduri nas he didn't say fi qulubin nas the so shaitan sends his waswasa his whispers into the chest not the heart because he cannot go straight to the heart he needs to go to the chest through the chest first and then after that through the heart so shaitan sends his whispers into the chests and as we said the chest is the fort it's the first line of defense protecting the heart now the heart the chest has all these you know characteristics like these things that we have in our in our chest like the the the, the love of allah the fear of allah the compassion the halal desires it also has shahawat right you have the, the desire can be halal or haram and you your heart since your heart is the king it kind of controls what your desire should be should be halal or haram so the heart is always telling you to do the halal thing but then comes the whisper of the shaitan to tell you to do the haram thing now the desire is there in the chest the shaitan comes and whispers in the chest let me just admit so the hala the, the shaitan comes and whispers into the chests and this is the first line of defense then the heart commands either stop from happening commands the soldiers to attack this whisper or the soldier is too weak so it gets defeated and then the whisper of the shaitan can go inside the heart and then the sin is committed so once that first line of defense is broken, the whispers get into the heart, the, the human commits the sin, then you have this black spot. For example, if it's greed, and the greed was able to defeat the amount of generosity that you have in your, your, your sadra. Then the person commit an act of greed. Now you have a sin on your heart. This is a black spot like the Prophet ﷺ called it, and the Quran calls it ran. So this ran, the black spot, is because of the sin that we did. But the Prophet ﷺ also told us that still, you still have a chance to survive. You still have a chance to remove this black spot from your heart. The battle is not over yet. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if you repent and you ask Allah for forgiveness and you do something good, then this black spot is removed. The saran, this black spot is removed from your heart and your back, your soldier is it, that was wounded. Now it's coming back to life and it's able to fight again. But if you do not do anything about it, if you do not repent to Allah, if you do not ask Allah for forgiveness, if you do not do good deeds, if you do not feed the soldiers, because these soldiers at the fort that are protecting the heart, they need food, and that food is the Quran, is the remembrance of Allah, is the khashya of Allah, is the hope, etc. If you do not feed these soldiers, then they will all crumble, and the shaitan's whisper will be able to come to the heart, and then the person will be able to commit all of these sins, and these sins are going to kind of put all these black spots on the heart until the heart becomes blind like mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hajj, فَإِنَّهَا لَتَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارُ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ It is not their eyesight that are blind. It's not their eyes that are blind, it's their hearts that are blind. And Allah mentioned the Ra'an in, in, in another surah, the, the fact that these spots are making the heart blind. It cannot tell the difference between halal and haram. And in Arabic language, they say Ra'anat al-Khamru ala al-Aql. They use the word Ra'an referring to alcohol. It says that when a person drinks alcohol, Ra'ana ala al-Aql. Basically, it's like the, the, this alcohol puts this veil puts this rishawa on the heart on the on the aql so the person doesn't know the right from wrong so this is exactly what happens to us when we surrender when we get defeated when we do not feed our soldiers when we do not feed our goodies our spirit our soul we end up having to commit these sins and we end up falling into the traps of shaitan and our hearts become blind it doesn't matter anymore i don't feel regret after i commit a sin etc so now the word sharh is also mentioned in so many other verses in the Quran. For example, Allah talks about an important verse. The verse is in Surah Al-An'am. 
if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for somebody to be guided, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens yashrah sadrahu lil-islam, expands, uplifts his heart, opens his heart for Islam. So this is one of the meanings we're talking about. وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَصَّعَدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ And the scholars of, like, the, who talk about the miraculous nature of the Qur'an talk about how the, the, the verse explains how the person who's going up when they don't have enough oxygen, their heart or their chest is constricted. And this is what the Qur'an describes. If Allah wants somebody to stay on his misguided way, it's as if that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, makes their chest dayyqan, like constricted, as if they are going up into the heavens where there is no oxygen, so they feel this constriction in their chest. And I'm sure all of us have experienced one day when you feel, you know, your, your, the know of your sins are so much that you feel the inability to breathe, subhanAllah. Why this happened to me once, I felt so sad that I felt that I'm unable to breathe, like I'm, I'm going to die, subhanAllah. And this came, this verse came to my head, يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَيَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَصَّعَدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ So this constriction that you get in the chest is the opposite of يَشْرَحْ, it's the opposite of the opening. And this is because the person chose to be misguided, chose to do the, the bad deeds and stayed away from the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we ever have this feeling of constriction, inability to breathe, sadness, depression, we need to go back to the Qur'an, we need to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we'll talk about the signs uh, that, that our, our chest is munsharih, inshallah, in the end of the halaqah. Prophet Musa alayhi salam, when he was going to Fir'aun, he said, Rabbi shrah li sadri. He said, oh Allah, open, expand my chest for me. Just like the Prophet ﷺ, when he was about to receive the revelation, this is when Angel Jibreel came the second time to open his chest for him and to purify his heart. And then in Surah Al-Zumar, Allah says, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ فَوَيْلُ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ Allah has given us the example of somebody whose heart is open and Allah opened his heart for Islam. He can see the light. So once your heart is, mashaAllah, on sharah, this is when you see the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see the straight path. You see the, the way of the righteous. And subhanAllah, look at this beautiful verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. This verse, subhanAllah, we talked a lot about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish someone unless the message was sent to them and they rejected the message, on purpose, of course. And this verse is beautiful evidence to confirm this belief, because Allah has fear, because some people believe, you know what? And Allah had this discussion with some Muslims, and it's just so sad. They said, it doesn't matter if they just heard the word Islam, that's enough for them to go to hell for eternity if they rejected it. But the message was not delivered. They just heard Islam, that's it. How could you say that they're going to hell for eternity not knowing what Islam is? And some people were like so extreme about that. Like if anybody hears of the word Islam, no matter if they know what it means, if the message is delivered or not, they're going to hell if they reject it for eternity, which is absolutely false. The message has to be, de to be delivered to the person for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send them to Jannah or to send them to Jahannam based on their uh, desires and arrogance, etc. So look at this verse. مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي It's in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah gives us the example of those people, the hypocrites. He says their example, their similitude, is of those people who ask for fire. They are asking for fire to show them the way, because back then they did not have electricity, etc. So they ask for guidance. They ask for light. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them that daw, this daw that they are looking for, this light. He shows them the way, he sends them the message. It's clear to them that this is the truth now. Now Allah tells us that when Allah showed them the way clear with light, they rejected it. 
they know this is the truth. They saw it was clear as the sun. And this Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, جعل الشمس It is Allah who made the sun a source of light. And the word that used in that verse was daw, which is like diya, coming from the sun. It's the source of, Allah showed them the source of light. Like big light, comparing the light of the sun to the, to the light of the moon. Well, qamara nura is the reflection. The qamar, the moon, is a reflection of the sun. So Allah not only gave them the reflection, He gave them the source of the light. He gave them the, all the light that they could ask for. ذهب الله بنورهم When they rejected the truth, when they rejected that message that came to them as clear as the sun, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took that light away from them. وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتٍ يَعْمَهُمْ And Allah left them in the darkness. So this is something that we all need to understand because sometimes you hear the Imam saying in the beginning of the khutbah, If Allah misguides somebody, does Allah misguide somebody? Allah doesn't misguide anyone. It's just Allah gives them the light. They know now it's the truth. It's as clear as the sun. They reject it, then Allah takes that light away and he leaves them in the darkness. So that's a beautiful meaning that we need to understand. In case somebody asks you, why does your Imam always say, if Allah misguides somebody, Allah doesn't misguide anyone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Surah Al-Zumar, Allah opens their heart to Islam. It's like nur, like light coming to them. They can see everything. And then, مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَحَوْ لَهُ ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ Allah takes away their light, those who are hypocrites, those who reject the truth after they know this is the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another verse in Surah Ali Imran, لِيَبْتَلِيَ اللَّهُ مَا فِي صُدُورِكُمْ وَلِيُمَحِّصَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah is talking about the chest and the heart in this verse, in, in Surah Ali Imran. The chest, as we said, it has all these soldiers that we're talking about, right? The generosity, the love of Allah, etc. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيَبْتَلِيَ مَا فِي صُدُورِكَ Or when Allah used the word ibtila, He referred to the sadr. When Allah sends an ibtila upon us, a test, it goes into those soldiers here, right? So if they, if we are, mashallah, if we have faith, enough faith, and we're not hypocrites, and we have this strong iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are feeding those soldiers, we are protecting those soldiers by being closer to Allah, reciting the Qur'an, reflecting on it, then we are going to pass that test. But then if we fail, then the light is taking away from us. And then Allah says, ma fi So Allah sends the ibtila, the test, upon the chest. And then the part, the second part of the verse, he says, ma fi So that Allah purifies your hearts. And the word yumahisa is used with gold. You know, gold will have these black, you know, things that are not, that maybe it's steel, maybe it's something else. So when you put that gold into uh, the, the fire to purify it, and it becomes just pure gold without any black spots, like we talked about the black spots here, this is what is used in the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends these tests upon us, upon our chests, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies our hearts from these black spots from these ran that we're talking about. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sends the test, it's upon the chest. And then the reason he sends upon us such test, subhanAllah, everything in our life could be a test. If you're rich, if you are poor, if you are happy, if you are sad, all of these are tests Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to know. Of course, Allah knows, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to know as well that you have committed this sin or that sin because of this or because of that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time He sends a test upon us, is to purify our hearts so that our hearts do not have run upon them. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said that every little thing that happens to us, even a splinter hurting our hand or hurting us, it removes some of our sins and it adds some of our uh, some good deeds to our book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is purifying us with these tests, you're finding our hearts. Now the second part, is a very important part because it talks about isma. Are the prophets infallible or not? And a lot of people have different opinions upon uh, when it comes to the infallibility of Prophet Muhammad and the infallibility of all the prophets in general. So since this is a very important topic in the second verse, whether the prophet is infallible or not, inshallah we'll talk about it next time. 
So this time we just focused on the heart and the chest and what happened to the Prophet وسلم, in the incident when the angels came to open his heart and how the chest is the line of the first line of defense for our heart and we need to, to feed the soldiers on that line of defense by giving them the Quran, reflection upon the Quran, uh, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing good deeds and all of these things to protect our heart, which is the main target of shaitan. And if shaitan gets to the heart, which is the center of iman, the center of aql, and he makes it blind, then subhanallah, we're not going to be able to differentiate between what's haram and what's halal. We're not going to be able to differentiate even between what's kufr and what is iman. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our hearts and purify our hearts and give us the ability to feed our hearts and our soul with iman and with ihsan. Ameen. We'll stop here inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. If you have any questions, please put them in the uh, chat. If you don't, then inshallah we'll start the kahoot. Um, Sister Sabine says, I'm sorry I missed the beginning, but what is the significance of the black spot on the Prophet Ali Salam's heart uh, that was washed away? So in a narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, said that uh, the angels that were removing it. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, inshallah I'll answer it next time. Yeah, but uh, uh, just what I said today was the angels when they removed it is that they said, I mean, this is the part that shaitan can get to him from. And in another narration, the Prophet said that they removed al ghil wal hasad, they removed malice and hatred and jealousy from my heart, and they replaced it with mercy and, and uh, compassion for the, the, the weak, the young, the elderly, etc. Uh, but the, also, this is good, a good question when it comes to the infallibility or the asma of the Prophet. And inshallah, we'll talk about it. Uh, next time. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay, we'll start now the Kahoot, inshallah. And if you are uh, not going to participate in the Kahoot, feel free to leave, inshallah. If they can review some of the verses we recited last time on the Kahoot, inshallah. Bismillah. Let me stop the recording so the video is not long.